I'm Haley Taylor, and you're listening to The Rough Draft Diaries. In our last episode, we began the story of children's book author Jan Wall, and we covered a lot of ground, so I'll retrace our steps just a little bit before we begin part two. Jan was born in 1933 in Columbus, Ohio. He lived with his grandparents for the majority of his youth before he went to Cornell University at the age of 17. From there, he received a scholarship to study his master's at the University of Copenhagen. While studying, he worked for author Isaac Dinesen and filmmaker Carl Theodor Dreyer. After receiving his master's in folk literature and film, Jan returned home, this time to New York City, where his first children's book, The Pleasant Field Mouse, was published. Oh yeah, and that first book was illustrated by none other than Maurice Sendak. So I started off in a grand, grand kind of way. And with the first book, I, maybe it's been downhill since then. Uh, I've published over 100, 100 books for, for children. But uh, I had reviews for with that book saying, Not Since Wind in the Willows. And another review said, uh, all belongs on the same high shelf as Beatrice Potter. Life moved quickly in New York. Jan still worked on writing children's books, but he also devoted time with his first love, film. Jan somehow arranged multiple strange encounters with various stars from the era of film he loved the most, the silent film era. He hung out with Gloria Swanson for a week or two after they met at a photography museum. Oh, I think we met at George Eastman House. And she would come to town and apparently call the, I don't know, what was the plaza. Anyway, one of the big hotels to say, this is Gloria Swanson. Wouldn't you like to say that Gloria Swanson is staying at your hotel? For years, he was close friends with actress and one of the original flappers, Louise Brooks. And she either called me Stinkpot or Junior. I can't remember if there's anything else that I can repeat. But anyway, a, a wonderful crazy, crazy lady. He also almost killed Greta Garbo when he recognized her while leaving a framer shop in New York. When she, she came close to me, she realized that I recognized her, that I knew who she was. And so she ran right through the traffic, right right through a red light on Park Avenue, and you know, taxis are zooming, and thank goodness she didn't you know, get run over. But I thought, I almost killed Greta Garbo. This may sound like Jan was living an enchanted lifestyle, the New York dream, but actually he was becoming disillusioned with the city. It's important to note that this is the late 1960s, and Jan was heavily involved in the anti-war movement. And then in 68, I was at the Democratic Convention, carrying my sign. My friends were getting their heads hit with uh, iron clubs with these angry policemen. And I thought, I don't want to die for what I believe in, that I don't think war is a good way to solve a problem. So I put down my sign, uh, came back to Toledo, and moved to Mexico, where I lived for the next 20-some years. Jan did come back to the States every once in a while. One instance involved a call from Norman Rockwell. He was familiar with Jan's work, and together they created the Norman Rockwell storybook in 1969. Then Jim Henson called. He was collecting story ideas for a new TV series he was writing. It would go on to be called Fraggle Rock. But Jan mostly stayed in Mexico, writing book after book after book. And the process of writing each story is almost as strange as Jan's various encounters with his film stars and artists. For some reason, each story finds its own vocabulary. And I cannot, I cannot explain that any more than I can explain where the ideas come from. I mean, they just... I always start with the title, by the way. I mean, the title comes, like you name the baby, and then the baby comes. No, it, it's a mystery. <laughs> I, I, I can't, and left brain, right brain, to me, that doesn't explain it either. Jan doesn't know where he gets his ideas for his books. And it seems like he doesn't like to be asked, mainly because he doesn't have an answer for it. I also don't have an answer for how Jan has lived such a fascinating life, meeting such fascinating characters. I always believe that to have that lifestyle, you have to be fairly aggressive. You have to be willing to chase after those experiences. But that's not Jan. Jan is a quiet, kind, soft-spoken individual. He almost reminds me of Forrest Gump, simply being in the right place at the right time. I think it's the writing that is the thread that went through my life. So that's why I could be in different places. 
I like this idea of security. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. And if somebody can find it, I mean, wow, terrific. But I don't, but that hasn't been my life. I mean, you could, like Emily Dixon, stay up in the attic, I guess, and write really wonderful little poems. <laughs> and then time on a little string or whatever she did and drop them down and let people, neighbors look at them. But I, but I think if you can while you're still young, to, to travel and, and to see how different people live. So maybe living an exciting lifestyle is not a question of how aggressive you are to find it, but maybe it's a question of how open you are to experience it. Jan has been experiencing life in Toledo for the past 20 years. He moved back to Ohio in the late 80s and has been here ever since, still writing his children's books and still watching his favorite silent films. I'm Haley Taylor, and you've been listening to The Rough Draft Diaries. Jan's connections for our next episode are... Uh, one would be Gail Conrad. There's a number of women who go around to schools and, and different things as women that they admire. She goes around as Eleanor Roosevelt. And her husband uh, is a published poet, published like in various magazines. And the third person is a lady who was born in India. Her name is Kamala uh, Srinivasan. Tune in next time to hear who I pick on the Rough Draft Diaries.